Men in old days was extremely well represented. Most likely did not have a hair out of place. His presentation was always to be kept at the utmost of appearances and regarded as extremely important not only to himself but to all of those who beheld his gentleman-like manner and appearance. In the late 17th and early 18th centuries, wigs were a fashionable trend. Wig use did not become widespread until two European kings began to have problems with their hair. A fashion was inborn as men within both royal courts started wearing wigs to appear more kingly and the trend trickled down to the lower classes. Fashion that included the wearing of wigs in all areas of life, even by those without hair problems. Once wigs became a fashion trend in Europe, Americans picked up the fashion because it was believed to add dignity to a person's overall appearance and standing in the community. The style of the wig and even the color of the wig could indicate class and position. Men in professional occupations frequently wore gray wigs. Men who work in the trades usually wore brown wigs. White wigs were used by judges and military officers. If a man had the means, it wasn't uncommon to own an assortment of wigs. Wigs were even made to match certain outfits. White wigs were worn on formal occasions, but due to cost, many men would simply powder a color wig white because they did not own a white wig. At the end of the 18th century, the use of wigs were replaced by hats. A hairy upper lip was an essential accessory. The most touch was an affectation, the most flattering to the vanity of the young. With it, the boy feels himself a man, it helped him to look old, and the look of age is useful in business and inspires confidence. The youth of 21 looks 30 with the most touch, and without it, he would look 16. During the 1900 to 1910 years, clothing started to be mass produced. This reduced the need to have something tailored made and ready to make clothing more accessible for all, regardless of wealth or social position.
The beginning of the 1930s saw the Great Depression. Although the average man couldn't afford to partake in the world of fashion, many of them enjoyed observing the style of choices of those who could. By the end of World War II, men strayed from the high standards and basic principles of fine dress established in the 30s. With lower demand, the price of costume tailoring rose, which allowed for the mass production of men's wear to take over as the everyday norm. This period saw the introduction of mass-produced, ready-to-wear clothing by some brands that are still selling us clothing today.